Um, I'm gonna. I'm going to be doing a commentary video on um, Jeremy Carter, uh, who now goes by the username of Husky394XP2.0, uh, right? Um, later in the video, he does mention um, Robert Breaker and Ed Fetheninger. Um so I'll be commentating and making a commentary on, on this whole vivid video. Okay. Alright, I'm going to do a quick video here. I'm going to kick this uh, username on uh, my channel. He commented like four ridiculous comments. And I'm pretty sure it's some of uh, Josh Alvarez's followers. but Or one of them anyway. Um, but... It's it's funny. It's he's getting a lot of little you know young kids following him and stuff, and he's preaching a false gospel. He preaches easy believism, you know. Um. And you you are preaching a false gospel, right? You you're trusting in your ask asking Jeremy Carter, and and you're not trusting in the blood atonement of Jesus. People probably ask me like, why do you do these videos on these people? Well. <laughs> Main thing is, I want to show, want to warn you about certain people on the internet. You know, certain names that you may see that may look like us, but they're not of us, and that's why I do this. And just to, you know, just to let, just to get, just to watch out for these kind of people. But you know, and also just the fact that this is just showing my what I've been saying for the past couple of weeks. You know, past month and month or two now that. Things are not getting better and better. Things are getting worse. And we have more and more false converts coming out of the woodwork. Um, and I'm going to talk, talk about something else here in a minute. That's uh, becoming a problem I'm seeing with this Alvarez camp. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, he comments on my uh, alcohol video. Alcohol in the Bible. And check this out. He says, I'm a double-minded hypocrite teaching people to drink alcohol, have a little sip. You know, it's funny because that's not at all what the Bible teaches. I proved it in my study, you know. Um, 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 let's see, where's that verse at? Numbers, Numbers chapter 6, verse 20. Right here. And it says, The priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. This is a holy, this is holy for the priest. With the wave breast and the heave shoulder, after that, the Nazarite may drink wine. How about that? Uh, why did he have to give up wine if it was not alcoholic? You know, if it wasn't fermented. And he was allowed to drink it after his vow was over with. Hmm. And why is it that Jews in the Old Testament couldn't drink wine or strong drink going into the tabernacle if it was not fermented? You know. But check this out right here. You know, uh, listen, uh, his name is, uh, uh, come on, scroll down, uh, Walking with God, okay? Um, first of all, Walking with God, whoever you are, make sure when you rebuke somebody that you quote the right verses. Because <laughs> uh, uh, what he's trying to quote here, he's quoting Proverbs 31, 29 through 35, and I'm going to show you this real quick. This is kind of funny. You now, if you're going to rebuke somebody, please know your Bible. Don't come on here and act like you know what you're talking about and quote the wrong verses. But I don't recall there being a verse 35 in Proverbs 31. I could be wrong. No, 31, 31 verses. And he quotes Proverbs 31, 29 through 35. But what this little uh, nut here is trying to do, he's trying to quote, I'll show you here. Proverbs 23, and uh, he's trying to quote this right here, 23, 29 through 35. Hey, uh, walking with God, make sure you quote the right verses. That way you don't look like an idiot, and you don't get exposed like I'm exposing you right now. So people stay away from you. And, and, uh, and you, Jeremy Carter, but believe that Jesus um, is God the Father. Yeah, he quotes this right here. You are an anti-Christ, Jeremy Carter. It is, you know. Whatever. I don't really care. 
but yeah, he goes on and says, uh, it doesn't say to drink. It says, don't even look. <laughs> don't be mad at me. Read it. Huh? Verse 31, when it is red, when it moves itself all right, fermented. Uh, okay. And don't act like there's no difference between new and old wine. There is no scripture to support that. I'm done. Read your Bible. Don't worry. I'm not going to call you lost. You're just idle and prideful. I'm just idle and prideful because I worked in the vineyards and I understand how wine's made. Yeah, sure there, Sonny boy. Sure, Sonny. Okay. There's no difference between old and new wine, really. So new wine's not fermented. Really? How about that? What's the Bible say about that? Acts chapter 2, verse 13 says, Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Okay, now listen to this. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken with what? New wine. Uh-oh. As ye suppose, seeing this, but the third hour of the day. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna tell somebody how wine's made, maybe you should go work in the vineyard and actually see how it's made. I did it, you know. He's a little arrogant. I, I know this is some sort of kid or whatever doing this. Some young kid he thinks he know understands the Bible. He can't even quote the right verses, you know. But uh, let's look at Proverbs 30, 23, not 31. That's what it should be. What is the context of this passage here? Well, it says, Who, had, who hath woe, who had sorrow, who had contentions, who had babbling? Who had wounds without cause? Who had redness of eyes? Hey, uh, princess, it's talking about drunkenness. Maybe you actually should read it yourself. What happens when you get drunk? You get redness of eyes. How about that? You know, and check this out. Thank they that goodness, tarry I long get at the drunk, wine. And I don't drink they that go to see mixed anymore. wine. I never What's been mixed drunk. Wine? You know, like Thank a mixed drink. Good goodness, That's what mixed wine is. That, what do they do when they tarry along with the wine? They're wine bibbing. They're perpetually drinking, becoming redness of eyes. They have sorrow. They have contention. They have wounds without a cause. Drunkenness. Read the context. You know, that's what the context of this passage is talking about. You know, it's just <laughs> apparently you don't know the difference between actually, you know, taking communion or, you know, Drinking a little bit of wine for a special occasion and drunkenness. There's a big difference. Alcohol is not a sin. There's no scripture to support that. And I proved it conclusively in my study. But, um, and he quotes on my Josh Alvarez. This is proof this little uh, jerk here is from the Josh Alvarez camp. These guys are lost. Josh Alvarez is the devil. He's going to burn hell. He's going to be left behind at the rapture. He's not saved. And I want to kick something else here in a minute. So I'm you know everyone who's in the book, said, Lamb's okay, book so what of do you life, think Jeremy Carter, do you? Sex, then what is it? Obviously what are the not. Premises of divorce is divorce allowed biblically? Are you, or and once you divorce, can you marry again? Who are you allowed to marry? Who said, who said you study marriage? Give me answers. Uh, first of all, I, I'm going to. I don't have to give you any answers. You know, maybe you need to get saved first so you can understand the Bible. But basically, you know. Um, sex is not marriage. Okay, it's a part of it. It's a big part of it. You know, yep. uh, you can't have you can't have sex without marriage, and you can't have marriage without sex. That's just the way it is. Yeah. But here's the thing: when you get married, it's a covenant. You have to make a commitment. You know, and have witnesses. At the same time, you got to tell somebody, "Hey, we're getting married." You know, and they're, and they're supposed to approve of it. And they go and lay down together. That's a biblical marriage. And I'm going to be doing a study this coming Saturday on it. But, you know, there's plenty of grounds for divorce. You know, how about unequally yoked marriages? How about, you know, uh, fornication? You know, sleeping outside of marriage? Adultery? Uh, there's plenty of reasons. I'm going to give plenty of them. But, you know, someone that has never been married before, you know, just a young little prideful brat, you know, and I want to say something about this here in a minute, Josh Alvarez thing. Uh, this is extremely dangerous, what he's doing. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute. Because he actually comments, let's find it real quick. Um, right here. 
this little jerk right here comments on Brian's uh, comment on my channel. Ah, come on. He said, Brian says, wow, excellent study. Hold on. Well, excellent study, brother. The Methodist connection absolutely blew my mind. I had no idea where this anti-alcohol idea came from, but that was definitely how I was raised. Um, and then he says right here, Mr. Walking with God, you know, he said, this is for you, Brian. Hey, how about you spell his name right? It's right there. You can't spell his name right. You know, and he says, excellent study. How far have you fallen? Don't be mad at me that who claim, that's who you claim to follow. And he gives a video here of Peter Ruckman on alcohol. Let me tell you something. If Peter Ruckman taught against alcohol, then he was wrong. All right? He was wrong. Did you hear me? He was wrong. Peter Ruckman oh was wrong. Okay? Um, and I want to say something about this Peter Ruckman thing. Now, I have a lot of respect for Peter Ruckman. He was a great man of God, absolutely. But is he the final standard? Jesus no. is the final standard. And you got standard. a problem here with these, this knucklehead right here. Um, See here, where's it at? Oh shoot, I lost it. Right here, this whole um, Josh Alvarez thing. Josh Alvarez just studies and studies and studies everything Peter Ruckman wrote, and you know, kind of like the Breaker and Gene Kim crowd, you know, Ed Finninger types. They just study everything Ruckman does, and then they put their own twist on it. You know. Um, Big danger in doing that, you know. Uh, when you have somebody that just copies somebody else's material and they're not original at all, it tells you the Holy Spirit's not in them. You need to be careful of this whole uh, Peter Ruckman idolatry thing, okay? This I I believe the Holy Spirit is in Ed and Robert Prater. I believe they are truly saved, right? How would you know, Jeremy Carter, that the Holy Spirit is not in them, hey? How would you know, Jeremy Carter? That's all I've got to say. We'll play more. Extremely, extremely dangerous. Um, I'm not saying you can't learn of the man or anything like that, but you know you need to read the Bible yourself. You know, and don't go to somebody and just study everything that they believed, and that should be your statement. That's not the way it should be. You know, you're supposed to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and apparently these little. Uh, novices right here don't know anything about personal relationship with jesus christ because they haven't been born again and i'll show you something else too well i this, believe ed finnegan is, is born, born again. again and same with robert breaker um, this right here is on the skillet video okay the antichrist rock band skillet and i proved that they are a satanic band and they are and look what look what this guy says right here it's walking with god he says how about witness, witnessing to them? If you think they are lost, then why not reach out to them? Show them the way instead of mocking them. Show them the way instead of mocking them. Okay. Don't you have compassion for the lost? Uh, not when they're teaching a false gospel and making millions of dollars. I don't. I, I don't speak know with charity. Yeah, it. sure you do. I'm People, not against this I video. Then why are you attacking it? it? You know, double standard. It's just sad that you get a kick more out of mocking and criticizing the loss instead of witnessing them. Okay, princess, why don't you go witness to John Cooper of Skillet and see how that goes over. You know, see how that goes over. Tell him he's a lost, hellbound sinner and needs to repent. Why don't you do that? Um, no, he loves the money. He loves the fame. He won't give up his worldliness. Not for two seconds. We don't have much time left. Stop going after sheep. Okay, w w wait a minute. Okay, first of all, you just said that they were you just said that they were lost. I just want to go through the comments.
Well, people like you, Jeremy Tanner, who says Jesus is God the Father, right, need to be watched, right, because, because you are a liar, Jeremy Tanner, just like your father, Satan. And that's all I've got to say. Okay, bye. Uh, back again, so I just want to show you, f um, that's uh, Brian's co 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 comment. Okay, thank you.